another one on my right hand side. I think we're clear on the inside now. Oh, a bit of a slow. Oh, we got smoke. We got smoke. Let's go down the inside here. Woo! All right, guys, hello and welcome to Le Mans Ultimate. So this is a brand new sim racing title releasing into a market that doesn't have an abundance of choice when it comes to variety in sim racing. So, uh, well, not for, not for hardcore simulations like what this is anyway. So I'm really excited, as I'm sure you guys are, to check this out and see how it compares to some of the other sim racing titles that are available and more importantly, whether or not I think that this is worth your hard-earned cash. So before we get into it today, firstly, a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Aces X Sim Sports. Now, in case you haven't already seen, they've just announced a bunch of uh, price drops across pretty much the full range of their, uh, of their sim racing products. So from wheels through pedals and, of course, wheelbases as well. Some pretty decent savings there based off the uh, off the old pricing. So check them out via the link down in the description below. Or if you're interested in some reviews of their products between uh, their products and, of course, some of the competitors, some comparisons, then check out BoostedMedia.net, which is also linked down in the description. And a big thank you to ACDX SimSports once again for sponsoring today's video. Now, speaking of sponsorships, also do need to let you guys know that we did pay full retail for this game so uh not that it would make any difference to anything we we're saying we never we never do sponsored videos uh where we you know where we're given something to say it's just not something that we do here at boosted media so uh i'm just going to be sharing my own opinions my own observations as always but i did just want to let you know that i did pay for the game it is exactly the same version of the game that you will be getting if you were to jump on steam and buy the game right now so no beta version nothing funny like that at all my experience should be identical to what you have if you buy the game right now. So what are we doing today? We're gonna to be doing a bit of a comparison against some other sims. I've jumped in a GTE car simply because this is the type of car that I'm more familiar with driving. So I thought it would be a better baseline to give us some points of comparison against some other sims. So we're gonna be looking at the physics, of course. We're gonna be looking at how the cars handle, force feedback quality. We're gonna be looking at the AI in detail as well, seeing how the quality of the actual racing is compared to some other sim racing titles. That is one area that does lack in a lot of other titles. So really keen to see how that goes. And as you can see, we've jumped ourselves right in the middle of a mixed pack here with LMP2 cars as well as hypercars so it's going to be really interesting in particular to see how that goes in terms of AI dynamics how they navigate through the field being a lot faster whether they just cause absolute chaos or whether it's a fun experience overall so a lot to unpack here today there are still quite a few bugs with this game what they've said is that they wanted to go into early release here uh, so that they could get feedback from you guys and uh, make improvements before going to final release. But there are a lot of bugs, in particular with the UI. One bug is that you choose a... So I chose an 18-minute uh, race for this, and I'm pretty sure that it's going to go for six hours. So we're not going to be going for six hours. I'll just keep talking until I've run out of stuff to say, and uh, we'll end the video there. So Green flag, let's go. we'll see how we go. It's going to be interesting into the source here. Turn one. You can see the prototype car's already hammering through the pack here. Bit of a touch in the back there. Gonna go out onto the grass just to stay out of the way of everybody else. Go around the outside of everybody else's accidents. Whoa! Walsh getting a little bit loose there. Gonna have prototypes everywhere coming through here now. Another one on my right hand side. I think we're clear on the inside now. Whoa, bit of a slow. Oh, we got smoke. We got smoke. Let's go down the inside here. Whoa. <laughs> now, one of the settings that we have in this uh, in this game, we have a couple with regards to AI. We've got AI strength, which I've got set to 100%. Uh, you can go higher than 100% if you want to. Uh, you've got uh, aggression as well, like you have in most other sims these days, which I've got set to 60%. And then you also have a setting which you can adjust through the uh, through the INI configuration files, which you might take a look at in another video, that allows you to set a value for how often the other cars make mistakes. Now I've set that to one, which is supposedly quite realistic. So we'll see how that all goes today as well. But interesting to see how these uh, these prototypes kind of carve through the field here. Obviously a lot faster than me on the straights. And so far, other than in the source in turn one, they are being relatively sensible it seems. A few little moments here and there, but for the most part, not causing too much chaos. 
We've got another one behind me now, so I'm going to have to just keep an eye on him, but... Whoa, a bit of a moment there. The curbs you've got to be really careful on. settle in a little bit here so we've got a whole bunch more coming through they're going to be with me any second they sneak up on you quickly i might make him go around the outside i think a little bit of a lift oh he's going to go he's going to go for the inside whoa here they come jeez wow a little bit of a touch there again oh that's a ferrari on my outside whoa nearly lost the back end <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Time two, How many more Point of them are there? Three. Go on, go through the inside. See, pretty sensible there. Nothing too much to complain about. What's this guy going to do? Come on, go past. Bit of a touch there. Oh, we got smoke again. Whoa! <laughs> I thought I was a goner there. Okay. A little bit of a lock up. Hopefully these guys will all be past us soon. I want to sort of focus on the, uh, the AI for now and then as things settle down we'll start to talk about the physics as the race progresses. So I think, where are all the uh, GTE cars? What I'll do is I'll, I'll drop back and get myself in a pack of GTE cars so we can have a bit of a battle with them, I think, unless this Ferrari stays in range. We'll see if we can catch up with him. Another prototype there. He's gonna go around the inside or outside, transitioning to the inside. All right, let's see what happens with this other 488. Now we're up nice and close. Nice little slide there. One thing that you do notice as we start to talk about the physics a little bit is that there's a lot of detail in the force feedback and uh, you really get a good sense of what the car's doing underneath you. So I'm finding that getting into little moments like that, it is quite intuitive. I wouldn't say easy, but intuitive when you try to catch the car. Little lock up again there. Still just finding my confidence. Okay. So we'll have a little battle with this guy and then we'll that drop back into a bigger two, pack and see how that goes too. But turn in nice and early here. Run up on the ripple strip there. You can see the sausage curb there. When you run up on that, you really get a sensation of the car trying to pull off to the side. You can really feel that sausage curb underneath you. Whereas a lot of other sim racing titles, so say ACC for example, a lot of detail in the force feedback in ACC, but it can sometimes just feel like uh, kind of like effects that are playing rather than actually giving you a sensation of what the car's doing underneath you. So one thing that I'm really appreciating about this so far is feeling a real strong sense of connectedness as I'm driving, which is really good. There's a lot of detail there too. so. The textures in the road surface, the uh, compression of the suspension, running up on the curves, touching grass as well, all feels very natural. And I kind of just feel connected to the car now. iRacing has always kind of been my sim of choice, simply because I've always felt like I just, I feel at one with the car in iRacing more than I do in any other title. And every title has its strengths and weaknesses, of course. And iRacing certainly doesn't have the most detail but I've always felt a good sense of what the car's doing underneath me. Got another prototype. Go on, go through, buddy. Don't hold me up. <laughs> a 
Maybe these guys are going to take each other out. No, nah, we're all good. I don't know why he was so far back. All right, let's catch up again here. See, so yeah, I racing, I've always felt at one with the car. I feel like it gives me what I need to feel, but it certainly doesn't have anywhere near the detail that we have here. So this is much more similar to ACC in that sense. Although ACC always feels a little bit more floaty to me than what this does so far. So I've got to say, very impressed with the quality. Whoop, we're hitting neutral there. <laughs> very impressed with the quality of the force feedback. Even just little slides like that, you really, it feels very intuitive. I'm able to catch the slide. That climb one day. Not easily, but intuitively. All right, let's try to challenge him up. Camel, again there, we've got a little bit of real spin on the uh, sausage curve there. I really felt it through the suspension. I do have the D-Box running as well, but most of the detail that I'm getting is through the steering wheel. Let's see how he defends here. Probably not quite close enough for him to move to the inside. Bit of a slide there again. Again, didn't get into that sort of pass. I guess what I, that's what I always refer to it as a passenger slide where the car gets out of shape and we've all experienced in iRacing where you lose the back end and the car just, you just become a passenger. You have no control whatsoever. And that's, it doesn't seem to be the case here. You get a good sensation of when the back end of the car is letting go and you can react to it intuitively before it just completely destroys you. And you get a good sensation of the balance of the car through corners as well. So let's run up alongside him here. Let's see if we can... No, we're not going to quite have the, uh, the run of him we need to transition to the inside. Another little twitch there. want to get really close to him on Camel Straight and see whether he moves to the inside to defend because that's one of the complaints that I have about uh, ACC is that you get alongside somebody I'm gonna stay behind him until Camel Straight because I want to see this but uh, yeah you get alongside somebody you, you position your car correctly and they just kind of jump out of your way in ACC and then once you overtake somebody I don't know if you guys have noticed you probably have but you overtake oh we've got two cars there that have uh, run off the track just sitting there on the infield. Looks like an AI glitch, maybe. Still some bugs to iron out. But, um... Yeah, if you position your car correctly, they never really challenge you. And then, uh... And then as soon as you overtake them, they just drop back and they're seconds behind within a few corners. So you never really get into a situation in ACC where you can have a decent battle against AI cars. So that's something that I want to see here. So let's see if he defends. I'm lifting off intentionally here because I want to see if I move to the inside if he defends or whether he just lets me out. So whoa, lock up. <laughs> Catch the slide. So he definitely did move across there. And I intentionally didn't shift up to sixth gear there because I wanted to sort of be alongside him. I've got two other GTEs behind me, which I'm sort of trying to uh, bring back into contention here. So I'm intentionally not passing this guy immediately just to sort of bring those guys back in. I'm making him slow by defending. And it's very realistic overall, I've got to say. him now if I can see if we can get up the inside of him so he's left the door open a little bit there he's probably gonna be have the inside line for this next turn don't cut him off leave space still alongside me slide it through all right we got him now let's see if he drops back or whether he stays with me.
I'm not going to increase my pace. I might have a flat spot. I can feel a vibration in the force feedback. I don't have any damage. You definitely do feel vibrations in the force feedback when you are carrying damage, but I haven't hit anything, so... Oh, he's alongside me again. Leave her the space. All right, those other two guys are right up with us now. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to intentionally let them by and I'm going to get myself in the middle of a pack of cars. I want to see what happens when you're battling with multiple other cars. So let's see whether they kind of intelligently choose between attack or defense. Is he going to attack the car in front or is he going to defend against me? Let's see, so I'll go to the inside. Yeah, he's definitely defending against me. No question about that. Pull back to the outside here, see if we can slipstream. I'm pretty sure what I'm feeling in the steering is a flat spot, if I'm not mistaken. Whoa, slide again. It feels very authentic. I did feel it before in another race when I was testing things out. What I did was I jumped in a few sessions and just sort of did the first lap just to get a feel for the settings and get things dialed into what I thought was going to provide the best experience to share with you guys. And it was very frustrating going through those menus and having the game crashing and glitching out and doing all sorts of weird things. So they definitely have a lot of work to do. I feel like the game isn't really quite ready to be released, to be honest with you guys just from a UI perspective. Oh, come on. <laughs> you can hear there the tires uh, slipping a little bit. I was able to modulate my braking inputs to uh, not go sliding straight into him though. And I've got to say that felt quite intuitive as well. All right, let's see what happens here between these two guys. Haven't seen any other major mistakes yet from the other cars. Hopefully I've jinxed them by saying that and we'll get a massive crash now. We did have those two that crashed at the end of the road here. Don't know what the deal was with that. <laughs> they intentionally there just kind of braked a little, lifted off the brakes and then went back in harder to see whether the guy behind would plow straight into me. He didn't. Let's see if we can get down the inside here. He's defending. A very realistic defense there. He kind of, he moved across to cover me, but didn't compromise his position against the Ferrari too much. So I feel like they've done a pretty good job here. A little bit of a lift. All right, see if we can get him. I want to go on the inside of him. Ah, oh, he let me through. Oh, he's moving across a little bit there. He's not taking the racing line. He's definitely moved across there, compromising my entry. And now he's gonna have the line for the next corner. Nice. See, that was really smart because he compromised. I couldn't, because he, the way he positioned his car, I couldn't move across to assume the racing line, which meant my entry was really compromised. He knew that. And he was able to run alongside me and then transition back across, which is exactly what I would have done if I was uh, defending against another driver in an online race. So definitely some, uh, some intelligent AI stuff going on here. I'm enjoying this. This is, uh, this is definitely a step up from the AI that you'd find in uh, ACC, for example. Whoa, nearly lost it. iRacing's AI is very good too. I need to go back and revisit that again, I think, before I say too much about it, because I haven't used it in a while. Oh, a little touch there. <laughs> that was my mistake. I missed the apex and I got a little tap from the Porsche behind. And you can see dirt on the windscreen too. That's another nice touch. One of the complaints I have about a lot of sims is that you don't, or most sims actually, you don't really get any uh, build up of, or accumulation of dirt on your windscreen or your, um, 
or your visor while you're driving. You get a little bit in iRacing, but not uh, not as much as you get in reality. But this is a, this is actually pretty cool. A little slide again. But all the elements come together really nicely to provide a very immersive experience overall. The force feedback's got lots of detail. Whoa, I spun it! <laughs> that was entirely my own fault. <laughs> Is there anybody else still behind me? Doesn't look like it. Alright, let's see if we can catch up. We'll do a fast lap. Probably cook my rear tyres. Well, I think that covers pretty much everything there is to cover anyway, to be honest with you guys. Good defense by the AI. That's going to be a uh, off track. There's a nasty vibration now. That vibration's a lot worse. But yeah, I mean, we've seen the defense by the AI is very good. The way the, uh, the, way the faster cars pass through the pack was maybe a little bit aggressive early on, but seemed to be okay in terms of how they behave themselves later on. We saw a couple of three wides and whatnot, but... Tire progression seems to be quite good as well. I mean, obviously we're very early on in a long race here, but I definitely feel the impact of that slide and the car's very unstable now and kind of just sliding all over the place. I've run wide again now, just on these hot tires. But I think to summarize, there's definitely a lot of potential here. The game certainly suffers in terms of longevity at the moment, simply because there isn't a lot of game modes. Or in fact, there's no real game mode. So all you've got really is just the, uh, the race weekend setting and then online. And obviously online will depend on the player base. But, whoa, yeah, I definitely cooked my tires. <laughs> real handful now but this is all the sort of stuff that we want to test but um yeah i mean should you buy it it's a hard call because it's not it's not groundbreakingly better than any other sim is at any one particular thing i think like between all of them like no no sim is perfect and i feel like for this particular type of car i mean obviously we yet to drive the uh, the hypercar and the p2 as well but I feel like this is doing a really good job of the one thing, but it certainly doesn't have the variety in it that you get with other sims. So you don't have as many tracks, you don't have any, as many different types of cars. Obviously we need to see how the online aspect goes as well, but yeah, look, I mean, I bought it because I wanted to test it out and obviously, you know, I make my money back off YouTube anyway, so it's not like I'm, you know, even though I bought the game, it's not like I'm you know, having to fork out for it or anything, you know, like it's, it's an easily justifiable purchase for boosted media, <laughs> you know, making content. But would I buy this game just for my own personal enjoyment? At the price, I think I would. But if the asking price for the game is a lot of money to you, then I would probably hold off for now and just sort of see how things evolve for a little while. They really do need to sort out the UI, uh, the UI glitches. That's definitely a problem at the moment that needs to be improved. But I mean, I've completely shagged these tires now just from sliding around and moving, but yeah, I think there's a lot of potential here. I think that uh, it's it's better than I thought it was gonna be. I didn't really know what to expect and uh, AI is good, handling's good, physics is good, graphics are good as well as you can see. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a step forward, I would say, in, uh, in terms of a lot of things. It's just got some polish still required so i'm going to end it there for today guys uh as i said earlier there is a glitch where the race kind of just doesn't finish so uh, we'll call it a day here guys but thank you very much for watching let me know in the comments down below if you do have any other specific questions as well anything you'd like answered obviously we'll unpack some things in more detail as we get on through we'll give those hypercars and p2s a drive as well and uh yeah keen to hear from you in the comments thanks for watching guys and i will see you again very soon bye